Uh, Don pointed to the uncertainties in, in, the, in the banking environment and in the, in the economic environment, but there are also uncertainties in the re regulatory environment, and, and we, we, we just seem to have encountered maybe one of those uh, in the uh, T-Mobile AT&T deal. I'd love to get your thoughts on whether that particular case is unique to AT&T and T-Mobile's deal, unique to uh, the telecom area, or whether you think it signals in terms of, well, both the FCC and the Justice Department, a, a turn in the attitude towards combinations. Well, there was a turn in May. Um, the Department of Justice brought four cases in May, and most uh, m and lawyers thought, well, wait a minute, because that was four compared to zero in the first period of the Obama administration. If you talk to the people in Washington, they'd say, well, you lawyers got too greedy and too aggressive. You were pushing the envelope. Uh, I'm not certain that's right. There were some subtle changes in the senior staff at the, in the Department of Justice. <clears throat> A couple of people have some what they would say creative, what we would, people on my side of the street would say incorrect theories about uh, uh, competition regulation and are pushing some theories that are a little bit unusual, including this, there's this idea of a disruptive entrant. That was in the H&R Block case, small merger, but it got a lot of attention in the M&A community because the target really wasn't a significant player in the tax preparation business. So it's, it's uncertain. We may be in an inflection point in terms of merger regulation. It's been a very, in the U.S., it's been very uh, pro-merger, um, really going back to the Clinton administration. And when there have been issues that have been dealt with on an adjustment basis, divest this, agree to open license that, or you know, do things like uh, that, these couple of cases since May of we're going to stop the deal are different, and they're making people a little bit more worried, especially in an environment where, with the exception of PE, of course, almost everything is horizontal. It is, you know, two guys getting synergies out of being fundamentally in the same business. The rest of the world is even more uncertain right now. The EU has been very aggressive, although there are not a lot of strategic things going on this, uh, you know, in Europe, as been mentioned before. I heard an amazing statistic recently on Bloomberg Radio that the in the UK, France, and Germany in the first nine months, 75% of the M&A activity was PE. What that really meant was there was so little strategic stuff going on, and the PE guys were propping up banks and doing all the stuff they were doing. So Europe has, has been aggressive, and then the emerging markets are getting uh, aggressive in a very odd, uh, very unpredictable way. Uh, India has a new merger regulation system with no rules, no staff. It's a statute. You don't really even know who to talk to about how to comply with it. And China has this new thing that, frankly, doesn't look to be substantively uh, difficult, but it elongates everything as a period that's very unpredictable. So we're in this, this odd period um, of horizontal deals. So all this stuff is going to be really focused. And we're not, it's really harder to predict. I think AT&T is an outlier. I think people say, wait a minute. You know, of course, they were going to take this on. That's right, but I think most of us thought, well, they take this on and they divest their way out of the problem. 